Well, if you're coming down fossil collecting at the end of May for a half term week, here are some of the different fossils that are worth looking for along the shoreline. The sea doing the work for you, washing them out of the mudslides. And in particular, the bone material on the beach. This material is heavy. A lot of people have asked me how to find bone along the Jurassic coast. The bone material is a very black colour and either that, if it's not jet black, it's very brown. And you can see the honeycomb effect the bone has there where the blood vessels, the Hervasian canals have been filled with white calcite. So bone's a fun thing to collect along the Jurassic coast. Here's a jaw of an ichthyosaur. You can see the little gnarled teeth in that jaw socket. The little teeth being ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea. Also to some backbones there of an ichthyosaur. Very eroded ichthyosaur backbones. The ichthyosaur grew up to 60 feet, swam as fast as a tuna fish and ate anything that moved back in the Jurassic. So these fossil finds you can look for along the shoreline, the sea doing the work for you. And also too from the ichthyosaur, funnily enough, a coprolite, the poo of the ichthyosaur. You can see those scales wrapped up in that coprolite there. The shiny scales probably of a dipedium fish, its last meal. Fish was a tasty meal for most ichthyosaurs back then. And then also too, here is a coprolite from the shark, a little shark's coprolite. You can see it had a convoluted intestine. And so you've got that sort of spiraled effect there. And um, they're really fun ones to find along the Jurassic coast at low tide. Stay away from the dangerous cliffs. They're liable to fall suddenly and without warning. Here's a gastropod fossil, a shell found from the deep sea marine environment you will be investigating the fossil finds from at low tide. An oyster shell would have sat there fe filter feeding on the sea floor like so. You can see those ones referred to with myth and legend called devil's toenails, those oyster shells from the Jurassic. Here behind me is a big nautilus you can see from the green sand and uh, then my plastic models to show people what the morphology of an ammonite was like and also to a belemnite. The belemnites, the guard of the sea creature, the belemnite, you can see here, the sort of pointed tail end of that sea creature. You find plenty of those along the Jurassic coast. That's one thing you will find a lot of. Fossil wood, monkey puzzle tree, got into the deep sea marine environment, fell to the sea floor and then fossilized. You find branches of those with uh, cones on. Then uh, the ammonite biscuits, we call those. You can see these ammonites preserved in the beef rock. And then uh, here on the particular fossil collecting site, you might be lucky enough to find a sea urchin, or my crushed a heart-shaped sea urchin. That's preserved in the flint rock, that particular one. Also to a fossil sponge you would have sat up on the reef like so. You see those fossil sponges from the Cretaceous age. Well, you can certainly find a lot of pieces of crinoid on the beach. The sea breaks them apart and you get stems on the beach of the crinoid. The crinoid stems are quite numerous in places because the sea is always damaging these thin sections of fossil material. And uh, as you walk out there, keep your eyes peeled for those little star-shaped ossicles. Very nice to pick up as you look along the Jurassic coast. Well, the other day when we were on the beach, looking at a large piece of crinoid section that Mike was doing a little bit of development on, we walked back and met up with museum education officer, Chris Andrew. And while we're talking about crinoid here, let's see the piece that we filmed off the cuff with Chris, all about a larger section of crinoid that Mike Harrison has found recently. Now, which piece was it in? Was it in? So we've got Chris Andrew is from it? the Lyme Regis Museum here. And Hello. there goes my sandwich packet. And Mike Harrison. This is not staged. I've just run into them. I have no <laughs> idea what they found. We haven't found it today. Oh, but it's fine. I was going to say, found today. today, I'm going to say, if you have not found anything today, you've out, done well. Came out for a special occasion. Right. The big unravelling, the big unwrapping. Of course, with the Tesco bag. Oh, that's rather nice. 
Well, if that isn't worth 20 quid, <laughs> that's absolutely stunning. That's lovely. Do you have any more bits of it? Because yes. that's been the thick bit. Oh, that that is plenty. A that, that is an absolutely stunning bit. That's. What oh, mark do you give Mike? Oh. I'd give him 9 out of 10. Yeah? <laughs> he has to have room to go somewhere else. <laughs> See, I always say that. Never a 10 out, nothing yeah, a 10 out it. of 10. Never. No, I mean, this is material that's been growing not on the sea floor. People always think of crinoids swaying in the current. This has been growing on floating driftwood. It sunk the sea floor as the wood sunk. That's been the down surface, brilliantly preserved, and the top much more scattered. But he's still got a crinoid head, another head there. He's got sections of stem. Some of the little star shapes. Oh, yeah, when you look at the ossicles there, that's it. Lovely little star shapes. And you can see the sections going all the way along, but you've always got a poorer side and a slightly better one. <laughs> so that's. I couldn't have put that better myself. I tell you what, that's what we needed, didn't we? This this that kind is... of uh, uh, YouTube but video. It also Excellent. Shows there's always things. It also to shows find. I have more in my rucksack. He hadn't even bothered washing the mud off this one. <laughs> so that's been exposed a little bit by the looks of it. That's a little bit more warm than your other bit. But on the whole, it, it isn't too bad. That's really nice. And it's a lovely thick bit. I don't isn't that lovely? see it that thick. I normally see thinner than that. It's somewhat of a rarity. That's isn't that lovely how chunky it is, Chris? Yeah, it is. yeah and it means that it's got edges that will fit. Nice big slab. Very nice. The museum looks forward to the donation. Uh, um, <laughs> donation. Chris, we'll, we'll Chris see, is here we'll on his day off. I do on the we, lottery. We, are, <laughs> we are looking. Uh, we've got a case in that's going to have a temporary exhibit in, but we're looking at keeping it to display nice local specimens. So if you're interested in that, that would be lovely to put in. Got a lot more of this. I, I, I did think, judging by it the thickness, it all goes together without bits missing. Yeah. As well. Yeah, no, that's lovely. No, no, I know that'll be a new collection and that'll be on onto, but no, we've got, it might actually, if we get all together, it'd be too big for our case, probably. Yeah. But we've got a case and heavy, about the weight, that. It, it the weight, Chris. About that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But if you've got a section that would go in. Mike Harrison has dedicated his time over the last three years to finding this crinoid specimen. He's worked hard to put it back together almost like a jigsaw puzzle. The piece you see here in the video is just a tiny fragment of the huge specimen that he has collected. It's a lot of work to do, but he is doing that work all through the winter months in particular and getting the fossil saved from the destruction of the sea.